Hi guys, right, I'm just going to do you a quick video. Um, a few people have asked me about yoga props, so I'm going to go through some of the basic yoga props that you're, you're likely to come across. Um, starting with things like bolster cushions, um, so that you can get these in all different sizes. You can get kind of these cylinder shaped ones, you can get these um, kind of half curved shaped semi circle ones, you can just get um, round ones you can get kind of sausage shaped ones but basically they all have the same job and that's just to make yoga poses more comfortable and um, particularly things like restorative yoga if you're doing for example a child pose position you're going to hold it for a long time um, so i'll give you a quick example so if i was going to do a child pose position and for example i found it uncomfortable to get my hips all the way back towards my heels or for my head to touch the ground or if i just found that i was kind of hanging in this position i could use the cushions to basically bring the ground up to me so i could then re rest my body weight onto them and just become a little bit more comfortable on the poses you know you could even have several cushions so i could place one behind my hips for example here to sit back onto i could let my body drape over another cushion so you're using them basically to support your body weight so that your body can relax into the shape of the pose a bit more comfortably um, but we can also use them for things like back bends so um, these cylindrical ones are particularly useful for that if you haven't got cushions like this though because they are quite pricey to be honest um, you can make do with things like blankets you know a good old blanket can be used for so many different things so you would just roll up a blanket into the shape that you wanted. So in this case, you know, you roll it into a sausage shape or you'd fold it up into a bit more of a supportive shape. But then we can do things like back bends over our props. So we could use it as a bit of a back extension, rest in the legs, rest in the arms. If you didn't find that comfortable on the head and the neck, um, again, you could use several cushions. You could have another one supporting the head here. But it just means that you can hold some of these poses for probably a lot longer um, than you perhaps normally would if you were just lying on the hard floor. It just makes them a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more supportive. So bolster cushions are great for making poses more accessible as well. For example, um, quite often used in pregnancy yoga classes, you know, you can, you can use them for, for taking the, the weight off certain parts of the body as well. Um, but they're really useful for, for just making a pose a little bit more comfortable so you can stay there a bit longer. Um, We've also got things like bricks and foam wedges, and you can get so many different shapes and sizes of these things nowadays, and it really is just a case of playing around with them. But your basic yoga bricks are normally made of either quite a dense foam, um, sometimes you get them made out of cork or even wood, um, but again, they're, they're, they're designed to adapt the pose to suit the person. So I'm going to show you how you can use yoga bricks, for example, to either make poses more challenging if you get to the point where the poses are becoming too easy and you want to advance them, or to make them easier for people that are perhaps new to some of the poses. Um, but in a nutshell, I find what they tend to do really is they just um, make up for proportion differences. So for example, if you've got quite short legs, um, and you wanted to make a pose a little bit more challenging, for example, a forward fold, if you got to the point now where you can reach the ground quite easily, you could use the bricks to lengthen your legs. So you could stand, have them the right way around. So you could stand on the bricks. So therefore you've got a little bit further to reach now. So we're making our legs in, in effect longer, aren't we? So that we're making that pose a little bit more challenging. Um, but on the other hand, if you did have long legs and you found it difficult to reach the ground in something like a forward fold, rather than hanging in midair, or if you don't like leaning on the body, you can use the bricks to bring the ground up to you. So again, you're kind of making up for either short arms, short legs, long arms, long legs. You're, you're using the poses to adapt your body shape, basically, to make that pose a bit more attainable. And we've got three sizes or three heights um, on the bricks. Obviously, that's the top height and then we can lower it down and then we can lower it down further but they're just really useful for either bringing the ground towards you or moving the ground further away from you in standing poses in folds things like your you know your classic triangle pose for example so if you wanted to reach down and you've got to the point where you can quite easily reach for the shin but you can't quite reach the floor you could just use your brick to raise the ground up to you so you're still keeping your good form but it just gives you that little bit of a, a kind of safety net there as well. So yoga bricks are great for that. For seated poses, exactly the same. So for example, if I'm wanting to do a seated forward fold um, and I'm going to make it a bit more challenging, 
I could start to make my legs longer. So rather than aiming to reach towards my feet, I could perhaps reach towards the brick or two bricks. So I'm extending that reach. I'm still going for that long extended line through the body and it will just give me a slightly deeper stretch. Um, you can also use your yoga bricks um, for arm length as well. So for example, staff pose position, if you can see, I've got quite a long spine. So when I've got my arms directly alongside myself, I haven't really got anywhere to push. So if I wanted to, for example, do a lifting pose, where I was going to try and bring my body weight off the ground, for example, um, I haven't got anywhere to push. So I would have to round my body to get that lift, which isn't obviously what we're trying to, um, trying to achieve. We're trying to keep a nice extended spine. So I would use the yoga bricks, bring them alongside me. So now I've got a little bit of extension through my arms so I can start to take that weight off. I could start to make these poses a bit more challenging. Um, so there's, there's ways that you can adapt the poses using yoga bricks to make it harder or easier. Um, another example would be something like a lunge. So a low level lunge, um, if I'm getting to the point where I can easily, you know, I've got my body weight sinking forwards and down and I can get a nice deep stretch. And I, and I wanted to go deeper into that stretch, but without necessarily taking my body further to the floor, I could just put the brick underneath my front leg so it's making that stretch a little bit more challenging for me making my the floor further away um, on the other hand if I wanted to make it easier for reaching if I struggle to reach the ground without rounding my back too much I could use the brick to raise the floor up towards my hands so then I'm making it a little bit easier so that's what yoga bricks are basically for um, yoga straps another way of, of using these to, to make up for you know proportions if you've got long legs for example and you struggle to reach you could use your yoga strap as an extension so you're just going to take it around and this also allows you to keep a different form so instead of kind of closing the body as we fold into a, a seated fold for example it would mean that we can kind of pull against it so we could keep our chest lifted keep the back extended as we move further forwards and further down um, other things that you can use the straps for is obviously extension of the arms again. So I'm going to show you a classic posture clasp pose here. So in an ideal world, you know, we can quite easily reach our hands, grab the fingers, and we can draw into our little stretch for our triceps. But when we're getting to the point where we're kind of here, or if you've got any shoulder issues, it's bridging that gap again. So we would use the strap in one hand, I would come behind with the other hand, and I would just literally start to walk my hands together bridging that gap so I can still get that stretch I can even then use the strap to pull or pull up or pull downwards um, but it's just giving me that little bit of extra reach there until I can comfortably grab my hands together and, and just you know kind of use that instead so that's that's the way that you can use some of these props to make poses either more challenging more attainable more comfortable um, another thing that you can do is to kind of take away compression factors in yoga so for example some people just do even like a simple seated cross-legged position if you really struggle to sit in your classic lotus pose you know sitting with a cushion underneath the hips or a bolster cushion um, or even just a folded up blanket can really make a huge difference here so do try playing around with that and the same for some of the seated forward folds if you feel that you're kind of going uphill rather than collapsing comfortably downhill having the hips slightly raised can make a big difference for that as well so do try playing around with with cushions from, from that respect um, blankets again I'm going to show you a couple of things now with blankets and straps for knee issues so obviously some of the poses we do in yoga involve putting pressure onto the knee joint all they involve is taking quite a deep flexion into the knee joint which for many people can be quite uncomfortable um, bottom line is if you're uncom uncomfortable in a yoga pose your body even if you're not aware of it your body's going to detect that discomfort and what does it do when it feels any kind of pain it starts to tighten us up so if we're trying to push ourselves to open the body but the body's going well, actually my knees are being squashed on the ground or it's a bit of a pinch or i'm getting that compression you might be trying to push yourself further into it but your body's going to be fighting you so you're just going to end up making yourself even more uncomfortable and just getting frustrated that you're not getting anywhere so using props like blankets and straps to open space to make things more comfortable and um, to give padding is, is not cheating it's just a way of making the poses more attainable for a lot of people and you might find after a while you can then take the props away and you don't need them anymore but it's just getting get the body used to it so i'll show you a couple of ways now that, that blankets again bolster cushions etc can be used for this but a nice folded blanket um, underneath hip bones 
if we're doing any kind of prone posture, so if we're lying down and you find it's uncomfortable either on your hip bones or your pubic bones, or even just pressure on the tummy, you could place the cushion underneath the hips. If we were doing something like leg raises or your locust position, that can be really nice for just giving the hips a bit more comfort. Um, same with the knee joint. If we're doing a kneeling pose, something like a camel pose or an upward bend, you know, put it underneath the, the kneecaps. The kneecaps are bony. There's no cushion there, is there? So they are going to feel a bit uncomfortable when we're on these hard floors, hard surfaces. Um, and even the ankle bones. For me personally, something like a hero pose, it's not the fact that I find the pose uncomfortable, I find the pose quite easy to do, but what I do find with this is if I'm doing it on a hard floor, it's the pressure of my body pushing that bony part of my shin against the ground, that, that I always find is the, is the thing that starts to get uncomfortable before anything else. So I would put the cushion underneath my shin bones here to take away that, that kind of pressed feel to make it a bit more comfortable as I go back and down into the pose. And it then means I can hold that pose much, 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 Come much more comfortably and for much longer without having to come out. Um, another way of, of taking pressure off knees is by placing it into the back of the knee. So for example here, look at the deep flexion on my knee joint and for some people that pinched feel or that real deep stretch that you get in there can just be too much if you're starting off. So you would use a blanket, fold it up, place it behind the knee crease or again you could use your bolster cushion here it's finding the, the thickness that is necessary. So obviously for me, this is way too much. I don't need that much pad in there, um, but this is actually quite nice if I'm having a day where my, my hips or my knees are feeling a little bit tighter than normal, perhaps having a bit of a cushion, a bit of, bit of pad in there to start with can really help. So using a cushion behind the knee joint allows me to go back into poses more comfortably. Um, if you haven't got access to cushions, yoga straps, you can actually use these as well. A little bit fiddlier to use, but what I do with these is, is get the strap and fold it into eight. So you're, you're kind of doubling it over and over. So you end up with about an inch thickness, and then you can actually place that right into the back of your knee crease. So when we sit back, and obviously you'd have one on either side, it just gives you that little bit of a spacer in the knee joint. So instead of you kind of pinching and pressing on the knee as we do any folds. And even if you do the squat position, for some people that might actually really help you in a squat to have that in the back of the knee crease. Just gives you that little bit of room in the knee joint, makes it more comfortable. So that's another thing that's often worth trying um, is using straps to create a bit of padding and a bit of support between the joints. You could probably do the same in the elbow joint if you had elbow issues. Um, but that's just a few ways that you can use cushions, pads, etc. Um, obviously, anywhere that you've got I'm just going to give you another example. If we're doing some sideline poses, for example, and you had a bit of a sore hip, you know, to place it underneath that pressure point just means that the poses are going to be more comfortable. You can hold them a lot longer. Um, and finally, obviously, for your relaxation, using them if you've got a bad back and you found it's just a little bit too much to do a full corpse pose on a flat floor, you could have your cushion just underneath the small of your back to give you that little bit of extra support. Or you could even roll it up, place it underneath your knee joint if you have knee issues there. Or you could place it underneath the head and the shoulders. Um, one other thing that I like to use um, a blanket for is actually shoulder stand pose. I find it's really useful. Um, so if you think about the pressure in a shoulder stand, it's kind of upper back, isn't it? Top of the shoulders, top of the shoulder girdle. We're trying not to squash the neck or the head too much. We want the weight to mainly be on this back body. But if you've got any neck issues or any shoulder issues and you find it's just uncomfortable, having that cushion or that padding so that it's directly underneath your shoulders and your head is just clear of it, so my head is kind of free to move around, means that then if I do move into something like a shoulder stand position, it's just going to be a lot more comfortable. I've got padding underneath the pressure points. Gives me a little bit more space as well between the back of my neck and the ground. So I'm not kind of squashing my chin onto my chest quite as much. Just makes the whole pose a little bit more comfortable to do. So it's another way of using cushions is things like your big inverted poses. Um, but do play around them. There's no right and wrong really when it comes to these bolster cushions. As I said, there's so many different shapes and you know, even materials that they're made out of now that are on the market, that you can use them for lots of different things. I've even seen some yoga bricks that are kind of an egg shape, 
um, which are designed for putting underneath the hands in things like downward facing dog so we could place the hands onto them and you hold onto them a little bit like a handle for people with any kind of wrist issues as well so they become quite useful for that but it really is a case of playing around um, find what works for you use them for, for making the poses more comfortable for more accessible um, there's no right or wrong as I said just just use your bricks use your, your straps your, your mats have a play see what you can find out um, and, and give me some feedback as well guys if there's anything that, that you've come across that you found a yoga prop for particularly useful um, do share it because if chances are if it's beneficial for one person there's probably a few others of you in the classes that are going to find that it's that it's useful as well okay so I hope that was that was useful for you thanks guys